Dai Day, a new host on Centered. My focus is how to design with emerging technologies, like artificial intelligence. And we're in Toronto today to talk to BenchSci, a startup using AI to help research scientists discover new drug treatments faster and more efficiently. So let's take a look. Thank you for being here. So tell me about BenchSci. So BenchSci is trying to solve a particular problem for scientists in the biomedical research space. So what BenchSci is doing is we've got our AI technology to read through the millions of papers out there in mm -hmm. the scientific literature, uh, just like a PhD biologist would, and show which antibodies have worked successfully in experiments. There's always papers coming out. The AI technology is able to scale across all the papers yeah. that um, we have access to, read through and take out that data and the relationships of the data within the papers yeah. and make it presentable to scientists. We try and present th things as objective as possible so that the scientist makes the decision it's for them. It's not the them. AI making the decision, it's you, the scientist, the end user making the decision. Yeah, using the AI more as a tool to help them um, find the literature, literature that they need, but in the end, it's, it's still down to them to make that decision of, oh, does this antibody look good um, in this experimental context? Will this work for me? They're trying to understand, essentially, can they trust the data that is being presented to them? When working with AI, it's critical that you understand your user's mental model. In other words, understand how they think that AI-driven product or feature works so that you can make design decisions that support that evolving mental model. My name is Violena, and I am a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Toronto. Okay. So I work uh, in cancer research. So we are trying to optimize drugs. We are trying to understand why certain drugs work better than the other. How does BenchSci enter the picture? What do you use BenchSci for? It's very quick because the search is already performed by this uh, platform. Mm -hmm. So I don't waste time and I just check all these papers. So what I love is to get all the information in a small space. Ah. So the layout is very efficient because it provides me all the information I need. Yeah. I just click here and I literally, I get everything I need. Yeah. I check the quality of the image, I check the publication, uh, the authors, the titles, if I want to read more. And if I'm interested, I already have the name of the product here, just yeah. here. So you can see in one screen, yeah. there is the entire information. Everything. Yes, there is everything. How is using BenchSci impacted your work in other ways? I can investigate other aspects that I would not even have considered before yeah. because it was not uh, possible in terms of time. Yeah. And this is very important because uh, science is made by uh, discovery and sometimes the discovery you know, they come from small things or yeah. things that you cannot even Unexpected. imagine. Yeah. Exactly, you yeah. don't imagine it. BenchSci uses artificial intelligence to search, extract, and display the relevant information for Violena's research work. In other words, AI augments the capabilities of researchers so that they have more time to focus on what they do best, creating drug treatments that work. Why is artificial intelligence, why is machine learning a good fit for solving this problem? When I think about why AI is kind of a unique, a unique way to tackle the problem that we're solving, I think it's the only way to tackle the problem that we're solving, and it's really an issue of scale. Totally understandable that these research scientists would have a lot of concerns around how much to trust the results they're seeing on your platform, right? There may be trade-offs between saving time and efficiency, but also the accuracy and comprehensiveness of everything that's available to them. How do you address that concern? We acknowledge that our platform's not perfect, our product's certainly not perfect, um, and there will be cases where they might see a false positive piece of information. Uh, we're very transparent about that. We give them access to a PhD scientist to report any of that, and we're very, very quick to respond to it. Um, it 
garners a lot of trust with people when they can flag something for you about your product. Yeah. And they can actually see results a few weeks later when you've gone and addressed that for them. We believe that our users are experts in their own domain and we've yeah. designed in such a way that we don't want to overstep that domain. We don't want to make decisions for them. Mm -hmm. We're an information aggregator. So even something as simple as when we show a list of products, like product results, when yeah. somebody enters sort of the search terms that they want, how do we actually rank those antibodies? We just show the products by the number of figures that we have for them. Mm. So objective. we don't, yeah, yeah, very objective. We're not trying to say one product is better than the other. All we're saying is there's more data on this product than the next product. And we leave it to them to actually dig in and see what that might mean for their particular experiment. For AI-driven products, it's especially critical that you make design decisions that help your users calibrate their trust in what your AI product can do. On one hand, you don't want them to not understand where these results or predictions are coming from, and so they don't trust your product or feature at all. But on the other hand, you also don't want them to blindly overtrust what AI can do for them. Rather, you want to strive for a happy medium where users both know what the AI may be better at, but also where their own skills and capabilities may be a better fit. I head up the science team. So our job as a science team, a team of PhD scientists who are trained in various areas of scientific research, yeah, okay. is to ensure the comprehensiveness and integrity of the data that's on the platform. Uh, we've talked about the importance of data sources um, to user trust. You mentioned earlier that the interface, right, the design itself is also really important in terms of earning end users' trust. Can you tell me more about that? We had to put as much effort into building our interface as much as we did in building the data and the algorithms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so a uh, scientific user is looking for a certain thing at a certain time. But there are many different things they could be looking for. Yeah. So we had to account for all the different ways scientists could actually search this information and show them that information at the appropriate time without overwhelming them with all the data that we have. So as you can imagine, our knowledge graph that consists of all the data that we've collected with our algorithms has way more information that we want to show all at once on the right. platform. Yeah. So we had to account for all the different ways the users would search this information. So design teams and science teams work very closely together. Uh, so part of the design process is really just first starting with the ideation. Do we have a new feature that we want to build? How is it going to integrate with our current data? What is the data structure that we have currently in place on our knowledge graph to allow that particular feature to be then integrated into the platform? It's important that UX, product, and data and engineering roles work hand in hand to ensure your data can support the design of AI-driven features that are grounded in user needs. As Bench Sai has shown us, it's critical to build user trust through the design of your AI-driven product. For more pointers on making AI product decisions, check out the People Plus AI Guidebook at pair.withgoogle.com. As product creators, we have a responsibility to create things that are focused on the human experience, things that are centered.